Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Avery, and this is Avery's Adventures. Today, we're still working on the 6, 7, 12 valve Cummins. Today is assembly, but first, first, we gotta get this cam bearing out of here. Now some of you may be saying, well that's not too bad. That's what a normal cam bearing should look like after 120,000 miles. You're not wrong. The thing is, right here, right there you can feel that ridge and there's a little tiny chunk taken out and i may have scratched it whenever i took the cam out so i'm not going to take the bottom end of this motor out to get a tool in here to press this in so we're going to make a tool to pull it out so let me show you what my idea is so i've got this nice cad program i use cardboard aided design we're going to take a piece of steel and we're gonna cut it to about this shape and it's gonna be a lot more uh, rounded than this to match the profile of this cam bearing hole. And this way, what we can do is, all well, you can see I can put this right up over that and it just about matches the cam bearing profile. So then we're gonna trim each side so we can stick this in here turn it and then pull it flat you see can I we're gonna stick this in here just like this pretend my fingers are threaded rod then we'll angle it up and get it flat just like that and we'll zzz on that threaded rod and pull it on out and then boom out it comes and then we want to put the new one in we just put this one on this side and the other parts on the other side and just zzzz, this one right back in so let me get to cutting all right y'all see the cardboard now look at here now i made this out of three eighths inch steel so we can put these notches in it because you might have thought well avery how would you get this centered on the cam bearing once it's inside the block but just like that so we can put uh, a hole in here it's gonna have to be more of a notch and we can stick this in on a piece of all thread pull it back it'll seat into the bearing and then we'll just tighten the thing and it'll just zzzz, right on out Whoa, we're almost there. I can't sing. Worth a toot. You know, you really could have fooled me. I thought it was moving for a minute. I brought you guys in just, just to be Tom Fuller Reed. And there we go. One cam bearing right up. Now let's get this new cam bearing in. 
and get the camshaft back in. Well, I've got the cam bore all marked up. I've got our cam bearing all marked up. So that way we can put this thing in there just like that and line it up. I'm gonna add some oil to the outside of this and then I'll take the hammer and lightly, very lightly tap on it to get it started. And then we'll put our tool in there and seat it in with the tool. I do have a brass hammer somewhere, but I can't find it. And that's what I would rather use, but we're just gonna go ahead and just lightly tap on it with our steel train hammer. So let's do that. All right, I've got the bearing all oiled up. That looks lined up nice and good. So then I'm going to take my hammer. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. Let me tell you guys, I love working on my, on my own automotive stuff and I love doing this. But whenever it comes to something that I've never done before, I get a little bit of built up inside because I don't want to screw it up and I don't have another one of these. So let's hope this thing goes in okie dokie. So back to it. All right, we'll take this, stick it right through the new bearing. We're gonna wanna have it turn sideways. There's not much to grab on, top and bottom. That's where it wants to grab. tell you it's tied on there we will add our washer and as y'all can expect next comes the nut Now the nut is up against. Let's see if we can drive this puppy in. Bearing looks to be straight now. It sure is not. Now, please do not do as I do. Please install a bearing the proper way. I am not a mechanic. I get asked all the time, hey, you work on cars? And the answer is no, I will not work on your car. I'm sorry. I'm not a diagnostics expert. I love to make stuff. I love to fabricate. I love building engines. And so, yes, I will work on my stuff. No, I do not want to replace the brake pads on your 2012 Nissan Sentra. All right. feel it binding just wasn't sure which side didn't want to go in This 
threaded rod is trying to turn while I'm turning the nut. Alright, we have a new cam bearing in here. How about that? Woo! Nice. Alright, so the next step is we're going to go grab our timing case right there at the edge of my fingertip. We're going to bring it out here. I've already cleaned out the RTV. We'll go ahead and slap some new RTV on the back side of it. And that way when we fit it up, it will just go right there up against the block. So I absolutely fudged up and just didn't turn the camera on while I was putting this uh, timing case on as I was fumbling around with it and it was raining. But I got some RTV on there. I kind of just pushed it up, got some bolts, and it's not tight because I want to do this 100% correct. And the instructions for the RTV, not that RTV, this kind of RTV is uh, you let it sit for 30 minutes after you put it in place, just torque it all down. So, we're gonna torque it down. My Allen key's not long enough. And what you have to do with these six sevens with a 12 valve cover you normally have if many of you are familiar with the cummins world a killer dowel pin which goes right in this hole and that helps locate the uh the timing cover timing case well i don't have it there's no dowel spin hole in my block and i don't have the ability to locate that um that hole so what you do is you take some countersunk bolts and you just run them into a couple of these bolt holes here and that will center the timing case on these bolt holes. And the biggest thing about getting the timing case centered is the timing or the injection pump is bolted to this timing case and it's what holds it. So if this timing case is off, uh, your camshaft and your crankshaft are both centered on the block. So that would change the gear lash between the injection pump and the timing case. And that needs to be just right. So use these countersunk bolts, like I said, to get it centered. I'm gonna get all these Tighten down and I'll install the rest of the timing case bolts. All the countersinkers are in. There's a monster in the road. 
So I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna find all the deep holes. I'm gonna thread these long bolts in. And these long bolts actually help hold the timing case into place when the timing cover's on. And that way I can just go ahead and tighten them down and get the extra grab we need in order to seat this RTV. Now we're gonna take this injection pump gear off. I already got the nut off. Come on. So to pull a VE injection pump gear, it's very simple. I have this piece of plate with two holes and two bolts. You put the bolts in the holes. You put the bolts in the holes. I'm right-handed. What is it? Half inch? 13 millimeter will work. And off she comes. Where do I put it? Right there. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to the cam bearing, we're gonna wipe the camshaft down and re-oil it. All right, so we've got our camshaft here. It's got a little bit of debris on it just from the wind blowing. So I'm gonna just go ahead and just wipe any debris that I find off. And then I'll come back with some oil and then go ahead and oil her up. All right, we got your battery changed. So, we're gonna just pour some of this right on here, just like so. It's just like the syrup dad used to give us every Saturday morning for pancakes. My dad made pancakes every Saturday morning for breakfast. Did you have a parent make you something for breakfast when you were growing up? If you did, what was it? I'm from the South, so we did pancakes, grits, and bacon. And that's not really like that Southern. My grandma would do grits. Let me tell you guys, Getting my hand soaked in oil and looping up a shaft like this is one of my favorite things. I love it. All right, now my hand soaked in oil. Let's carry this out there. All right, boys, gals, and ladies, gentlemen, dragons, and unicorns, we're gonna stuff this camshaft back in. It's two and a half foot long camshaft. All of our tappets have magically stayed up. It's not raining at the moment. Not that that matters. Let's get this in. Slam! Straight in. Not gonna say anything. Not gonna say it.
This bumper's in my way. Now this is the tricky part. Mm -mm. Ah! All right, now before we slide this in to engage the crank gear, we need to get the crank gear timing marks lined up with this timing mark just for easeability for whoever has to take this apart later down the road. Probably me, but I never know. Well, what size is this? Come on now. Where are you? Hey, right there. There she blows. There she blows! Mighty. I have the whole camshaft in backwards. Or not backwards. That's technically impossible. I mean, 180 degrees out around. Yep. Just like that. Pull it out again. Now the RC blows. Whatever your problem is, you work. So let me get this oil off my hands and we'll zap this back in. Cam shaft is in. 13! You know you're the lucky winner, right? Shrink! I need to get this exchanged to Harbor Freight. Don't have another one like that in there. You know what works great? When you just go ahead and cut the end of the bolts off because you don't have another replacement bolt except for in your backup engine where you can't get to it. Oh, yep, cut the end of the bolts off, round the threads, call it good. Now we got that on there. Gotta get our timing gear on. Injection pump gear. Why do I keep calling it a timing gear? I don't know. No, we don't need you in there no more. Now, but what we do need is for this way to line up so if I rotate this one this way then that one will turn this way and then this one will turn that way so I need to rotate this one this way this one's this way this one's that way and then that will turn that way so if I go this way yeah yeah I got it figured out don't worry Perfect. Right? 
everything and the timing case is back together. Boom! So next up, now that we got the camshaft in, we can watch. Boom! Boom! Our push rods. Now we got a, I'm pretty sure this one here. one here are the ones out of the engine because they have oil on the top of them these do not they're pretty crody who is summoning me we got this nice new cylinder head gasket cylinder head gasket Arrgh. Side stop. Does it matter? Well, that is for a 6.7 liter bore. It only goes on one way, I'm guessing. Well, you don't want to go over this roll pin and you don't want to seat up against the timing case. Well, you don't go that way. Can I help you that way? There we go. Head gasket installed. Well, here comes the cylinder head. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. Gotta make sure to eat your Wheaties. All right. Let's go up some more. Before we knock that filter on the, on the block again. Well, the sensor is broken, and I don't ever plug it in, so snip. We're good. Come on, fuel filter housing. We don't need this issue again. Up, up and away. How many dang garbage trucks do we have? You can just fall out through there. All right, we're gonna take her down some. All right, we're gonna go in more. Now we're stuck. All right, I guess we can go down some. No. Oh well. That's all the reach I got. 
apparently. We are close, let me tell you. Take a head stud and drop it down in this hole. Actually, you know what? I think we should start from the back. So, I got too much dang stuff up on this bumper. Let me come in here. Well, we got one head stud going in. You'll probably can't see very well because I'm in your way. Well, we've got that head stud started. And that's all that matters. We're going to sink this one down in this hole. And it starts. So we got two head studs started, one front and one rear. So that means we should be clear to drop that head cylinder head. Woo! Alright, front is seated Now the rear is seated. Cylinder head is back on the engine. High five. What? Come on. All right, so. Now we got all this back in place. We can go ahead and start putting it together. We're not gonna put the vacuum pump on because like I said in the last video, this bolt was missing. I only got one, it takes two. Right there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pop all this back together. I gotta go and get the gasket for the timing cover. We'll get the timing cover on. This should be easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Last one in first. Come on, don't do that to me. Where are you? I know you're in here. Don't play that game with me. There we go. 
Then I'm gonna try to do the same thing. The last push rod. And you can see me wiping each one down before I put it in here. It's just to get any excess dirt that may have fallen on them while they were sitting in the garage. Now, if you remember, I stamped each one of these with a number. Go with corresponding piston, cylinder, push rods, valves, whatever they are. Now, you don't have to do this. It is just something I wanted to do to make me feel better about where these go. I should probably start from the back. Wipe all that oil on the bottom. Won't get in between our clamping surfaces. What kind of services do you offer? Clamping. Number five. Four. Just don't seem like you're sitting down flat. Three. There we go. Last but not least, number two. hardware and we'll get some hardware in here the, the wet hardware I separated them now we got a long studs One for you, and one for you. Don't worry, I got more treats for y'all. Yay! That's my rocker arm pedestals. Screaming for more treats. No! You all passed with flying colors. We're on the last sequence and 125 foot pounds. So let's do this last torque and then the last one after that is uh, we got to do a hot torque, which means after we get this thing all the way back together, we got to get it to running tips. Then once it's up to running temps, we turn it off and we go ahead and torque it again. Let me tell you. If y'all have never torqued a cylinder head before, whoo boy howdy. It's not really the first two that gets you. Or the first two rounds. Cause you have to tighten these puppies. It's 125 foot pounds, but you can't start at 125 foot pounds.
you got to start it something like 40. That's one, two. all right so now that we got that done let's torque the other ones all right now these eight millimeter bolts they go to a whopping 25 foot pounds I just can't be right. That would not surprise me. Well, we're just gonna snake this hose in here. And set this down right there. Boom. One valve cover installed. Boom. Two valve covers installed. Y'all ready for this, guys? Y'all ready for this? Y'all never see this coming. Not in a million years. Boom! Another valve cover installed. But you'll never, never see this one coming either. But you never see this one coming either. Boom! Who knew this was? There, there were so many valve covers. Boom! Reinstalled again. And, and sending it home with the, four, the sixth valve cover, fifth valve cover, because there's technically only five now. I actually got these valve cover gaskets off of Amazon for $9.99. I had a bunch of people be like, oh, well, they're not going to last. They're not going to work. You got to go and buy the good ones. I've bought the ones off eBay before. Not eBay, off of Amazon. They weren't any good. Well, I'm here to tell you. These bad Larrys for $9.99. Got 10,000 miles on them and they ain't lick, dripped a dot. The other ones leak and the other ones are Felbro. So I'm gonna say this if you go on Amazon and you order yourself a cheap instead of cheap uh, valve cover gaskets, make sure to buy the blue ones. Blue ones are the good ones. Apparently. I wouldn't know because I don't have any kids. <laughs> Boom! Valve covers are on. Time to covers next! Well, I went to O'Reilly's and I picked up our gasket and actually it was a whole kit for $50. I got this gasket plus a new seal Plus the gasket that we should have used behind the timing case. <sighs> it's been there since Thursday. It's Tuesday. Yeah. I uh, I should have gone and gotten that. Then we wouldn't have had to use as much RTV. But, I mean, I like the RTV. It squished out nice. Kind of sealed up. But we'll see if that actually works. For now... We're going to go ahead and stick this timing case on. All right, now that everything is out of the way, there's a very scientific way to installing this uh, crankshaft front main seal. You got this little plastic cone that goes in and it expands and you just slip it right on the front of the crank pulley well if I could get 
a couple of things to stop moving in front of my face. That would be nice. Let's, can we get a, a bolt in here? Where are you going, gasket? Come on. Need you to make it to your home. I'm just gonna take one of these random long bolts. Oh, that's where it goes. Perfect. Just like that. Let me just pull this little ring out. And on it goes. And then go ahead and just stuff all your bolts in. So let's do that. Well, that was unplanned. All right. Timing cover installed. Oh, well. Come on out. You're in the way. Thank you. Fuel oil filler neck. That's not for fuel. Installed. And then we've got another real easy one. We're gonna install this vacuum slash power steering pump. Well, and off comes our gasket. Trying my best not to destroy this gasket, but it's a little difficult. We're going to put the gasket on the pump this time. That way. Yep. Come on now. Right in she goes. Not just a little. All right, hand me a bolt. There we go.
that one's in. All right, guys, we got the whole 6, 7, 12 valve back together. Well, not the whole thing. We didn't get the fine nicks and crannies all bolted back together, but we got the cylinder head on and we got the timing case on, a camshaft in, timing cover on, and the head studs bolted down. And I'll say that's some pretty good progress, especially when you gotta rummage around, set up camera, do all this. Let me tell you guys, it adds some time to work it. I'll say that. But it's gonna thunderstorm here for the next three to five days. Normally I would say, you know what, let's go ahead and just cram the last 10 minutes of video time of me just putting everything back together so we can go try this out. But with five days of intermission, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off here. So I really appreciate y'all tuning in this time. If you enjoyed the episode, give me a big thumbs up. If you wanna see this thing back together and see how she does after we've gotten all the exhaust leaks fixed, wait for the next episode. Maybe subscribe. You'll be coming back if you are. All right, guys. Y'all have a good afternoon, day, morning, 2 a.m., who knows? Later.